Today I am sitting down with Jonathan Stone, um, the Executive Director of Save the Bay. Uh, we're going to talk about um, a recent uh, or an upcoming decision uh, regarding Manhattan in the Bay. Um, they're a very important fish, a little tiny oily fish. They're important to our ecosystem um, as well as the economy in Rhode Island. So can you tell me um, what's going on with Manhattan? Sure, I think it's a good, good place to start is to explain how important Manhattan are to the Narragansett Bay ecosystem. And they play a number of the, the fish, the species, plays a number of different um, interesting roles in the health of Narragansett Bay. First of all, the fish itself uh, spawns in uh, estuaries to the south of Rhode Island, and uh, Chesapeake Bay in particular is an important spawning ground and area for juvenile menhaden to grow. And every year they swim north and are carried by the Gulf Stream north to Rhode Island and uh, feed on plankton here in Rhode Island, in Narragansett Bay, over the course of the summer, and then they head south in the fall. And uh, they love Narragansett Bay because we have a lot of plankton, and they are filter feeders. They consume plankton. And um, one of the great things about menhaden from the perspective of other fish is that they are tasty. They're really tasty. You mentioned earlier, they're very oily. They're small fish, they swim in large schools. Uh, they're pretty easy for other fish to catch. And they're kind of like bacon for striped bass. They are just the preferred food for lots of important recreational species like striped bass, bluefish. And they also play an important role for other species like whales, like crabs, lobster, uh, bottom-dwelling fish, and so they are really play a crucial role in the food web. So that's one key issue, one key reason why they're important. The second reason is that they filter the water, they remove plankton from the water, and in Narragansett Bay, particularly in the upper reaches of the bay, we have a lot of plankton because we have too much nitrogen, and nitrogen is the nutrient that supplies the food for plankton. So they play these dual roles of filtering the water, cleaning the water, and um, feeding lots of important fish that drive the recreational economy. Perfect. So you mentioned, first of all, that they're super important filter feeding fish. They keep up the water quality in the bay. Um, and then also they're an integral part of the food system for, you mentioned, um, sporting fish. Sure. like yeah, recreational fish, recreational striped fish. bass, which is a, sort of the key one. And mm -hmm. the striped bass recreational fishery is a big driver to uh, tourism and um, the recreational fishing industry. So we have lots of people, millions of people come to Rhode Island every year to enjoy the beaches. Mm -hmm. Many of them come to enjoy fishing. Mm -hmm. And most, the most popular fish to be caught around here is striped bass, which is delicious to eat. And, uh, there's a lot of research that shows that more menhaden equals more striped bass. They really, striped bass thrive and gain a lot of weight when they have menhaden to eat. Mm -hmm. So bigger fish, healthier fish all revolve around menhaden. Definitely. So tourism is actually Rhode Island's second largest industry and I think that also plays a huge role into it. As you mentioned, tons of people, thousands of people come every year to Rhode Island to our beaches um, for the beautiful water, the beautiful beaches, and then also um, thousands of angler fishers come to Rhode Island to fish in our waters. Right, yep, and it, it, the, the economic ripple effects are pretty extensive. You know, if people, uh, let's say people come into the state, they go to restaurants, mm -hmm. they stay at hotels, they hire a charter captain that takes them out on the bay, mm -hmm. for example, uh, they go to bait shops, tackle shops, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of um, spending that, can, that tourists bring to the state that go beyond just the simple act of out there uh, being out there catching fish so it is as you pointed out it's a really important industry for Rhode Island and yeah. within uh, uh, the context of tourism it's a very important driver to tourism definitely um, so what is this decision in regards to Manhattan and who is making it sure great question uh, we're now we're getting into the ar arcane topic of federal fisheries management policy the uh, cat the commercial catch limits for Manhattan are set by a body, a federal body called the Atlantic States Marine Fisheries mm -hmm. Commission, the ASMFC. And the ASMFC is a regional body that's comprised of representatives of the uh, Atlantic Coast states plus a few federal agency folks. Mm -hmm. And the commission determines how many fish a particular species can be caught by commercial harvesters. Mm -hmm. In the case of Menhaden, 
um, the, the Commission is considering new ways of setting the quota, the commercial catch quota. And that's why we're having this conversation today. The, um, there's great interest among many people, scientists, recreational fishermen, and even commercial fishermen, of thinking differently about how we set the quota for Menhaden because they're at the bottom of the food web. They, more Menhaden feed so many other species of much mm -hmm. higher commercial value. Right. So there's great interest in rethinking the, the approach that, that we take to how we set that quota. Uh, the Atlantic States Marine Fishery Commission uh, in early November is, or mid-November, is going to be making a decision about what methodology is used to set the quota. Mm -hmm. And Rhode Island plays an important role on the commission. We have three delegates, and uh, Rhode Island gets one overall vote about how the policy has changed. Mm -hmm. And it's important that we speak up to advocate uh, for a new, uh, this new approach to setting the commercial quota. Uh, the vote will be taken on November 13th, and we'll know then if the commission has adopted these new rules. Awesome. So I'm going to back up a little bit um, and have you talk a little bit more about um, what a quota means and why that is important. Sure. So the the way this particular fishery works is the this uh, commission, Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission, sets an overall catch quota for the commercial harvest of Menhaden for the entire East Coast. Mm -hmm. And then the Commission allocates that catch quota to various states. So um, as it turns out, the quotas are allocated based on historic catches, commercial catches of this fish. Mm -hmm. And um, using the data, uh, that the, the Commission uses data that goes back to the early 1980s mm -hmm. to, s to allocate the quota. Virginia, by the 1980s, was harvesting most of men, the menhaden caught on the East Coast. And so today, Virginia gets 85% of the catch quota. Whatever that quota is, whatever the, whatever the allowable catch is, Virginia is allocated 85% of that. New Jersey is allocated 4% of that, and the rest of the New England states and the Atlantic states are allocated the rest. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, uh, I misspoke. Um, New Jersey is allocated 11%. So Virginia 85%, New Jersey 11%, the rest of the East Coast states are allocated 4%. Mm -hmm. So there are two big issues that we'd like to see changed, two topics we'd like to see addressed. One is mm -hmm. we'd like to see more fish in the sea, which mm -hmm. means reduce the commercial harvest quota. Right. And we'd like to see a reallocation of that catch uh, to states that historically, pre-1980, had many, many fish, and those include the New England states. We'd like to see Rhode Island receive a larger share of the allowable quota. Definitely. So the quota are, is more or less how many fish can be taken out of the right. ocean, right. and it's set by this uh, commission. Atlantic Fisher Commission so that there isn't a complete ecosystem collapse where you're taking the entire food source for all of these animals that rely on the fish out of the ocean. Exactly. And one way to think about it is uh, the fewer fish you take out mm -hmm. in the commercial harvest, the more likely and more more likely the population of fish will rebound quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you take out 70, 80 percent of the fish every year, it's much harder for that fishery to recover mm -hmm. to its sort of normal level. Mm -hmm. If you take out a smaller percentage of the population, the, the uh, species can recover much more quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal of this new quota system is to reduce the fishing pressure in the short run so that the overall population of Menhaden can continue to expand. Mm -hmm. That will mean more fish available for commercial fishermen over the long run and also more fish available for all of the other species that consume Menhaden. Right. So the system that's currently in place um, is one that just allocates the amount of Menhaden um, to different states um, and the system that Save the Bay is advocating to put in place is an ecosystem management system? That's correct. The, the, the uh, typical methodology used to set commercial harvest quotas mm -hmm. is based on the idea of the total maximum allowable catch. In other words, maximize the amount of fish you can take out of the sea mm -hmm. while allowing the species to persist, to survive. Unfortunately, that's had the perverse effect of uh, 
driving down populations to a very low level, roughly 5 to 10 percent of a normal healthy population of species. Uh, so the, the quota system for mo many species on the East Coast um, does not sustain populations at uh, sort of normal, higher, right. unpressured levels. Mm -hmm. And that's been true of Menhaden too. The fisheries, Menhaden fishery has been depleted. Mm -hmm. it, it has gradually rebuilt uh, in recent years, uh, but we're nowhere near that sort of normalized healthy population. Mm -hmm. And this ecosystem-based approach would allow for fishing anywhere between 40 to 60 percent of the normal population each year and at that level the species can recover very quickly mm -hmm. within a year. If you take more out of the sea then it's much more difficult for the species to recover quickly. That makes sense. So it's sort of the equivalent of like if there are two pandas left in the wild then that's enough pandas because there'll be another panda next year but in actuality that's not a healthy population of pandas. Right. Think about it this way, certain when you deplete a species to such a low level of its normalized potential, it becomes ecologically irrelevant and maybe in theory sustainable, as you pointed out the panda example is a great example, maybe theoretically sustainable, mm -hmm. but it is not ecologically relevant. Right. And we've seen, unfortunately, this happen with other important species like cod, where the species is, is still around, but not really ecologically relevant and certainly not commercially relevant, relevant to the commercial fishing industry. Mm -hmm. So um, our hope is that this, pati this particular species is so important in the food web that this new approach could be adopted. And uh, we think there's a lot of support for this new approach. Uh, if it is adopted, it'll be a great test case for it ecosystem-based approach to managing the fishery mm -hmm. and we all believe that more fish will benefit uh, everybody so the people share that goal. Um, would you like to expand a little bit about um, the allocation of quotas to the different states in the Atlantic Fishery Commission? Sure yeah it is the the, the Fisheries Council as I said uh, essentially assigns quota based on the historical commercial catch. Unfortunately, because there's very inconsistent data on commercial catches prior to the 1980s, mm -hmm. the Fisheries Commission bases the allocation of quota on the history of commercial catches from the 80s on. Mm -hmm. At By that t point in time, by the 1980s, Virginia, and in fact one company in Virginia, dominated the harvest of commercial Menhaden. So Virginia by default gets the lion's share of the quota. If you look back into the 60s, 50s, 40s, a lot of fish were caught up and down the East Coast in other states, but that data isn't captured in the assignment of quota. So we're urging the Commission to rethink the quota, and there's a whole series of different proposals uh, on the table about how quota might be reassigned, and they all have pros and cons. But uh, the basic message is that it, it is grossly unfair to industries outside of Virginia and, and New Jersey, which also has sizable quota, to not have a larger portion of the commercial harvest. So we'd like to see that reallocated. Most menhaden caught on the East Coast are used in what's called a reduction fishery. Uh, the one company that I'm thinking of in Virginia, mm -hmm. Omega Proteins, catches the fish grinds them up into fish meal and extracts the oil. Mm -hmm. And the, the oil and the meal are sold, the meal is sold for feed, uh, much of the meal is sold for, to fish farmers mm -hmm. to, in Asia who re-export tilapia to the United States using American-made Manhattan meal, mm -hmm. uh, and the oil is sold for other purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the commercial harvest is used for bait, uh, particularly the lobster fishery in Maine depends on Manhattan as bait. So. These are the sort of the basic uses of the commercial harvest. Perfect. So to recap, the uh, commission is going to make a decision right. um, on November 13th. Um, what can people do if they want to see a change in the way Manhattan is managed in Rhode Island in our waters? I, I think the most important thing Rhode, Island, Rhode Islanders can do is contact the governor's office or Senator Sue Sosnowski, who is a commissioner, the governor's office, the governor uh, is um, uh, through the Department of Environmental Management and another appointee 
determines who those other two commissioners are. Mm -hmm. So uh, my advice would be for interested people to to pick up the phone and call the governor's office or call Senator Sue Sosnowski or send them an email saying how important conservation of Ben Hayden is and urging them to support uh, the um, uh, adoption of uh, ecosystem-based approach to setting the quota for Menhaden. More specifically, we are arguing for support of what's called Option E of Amendment 3. So uh, if you really want to get down in the weeds on this, um, call Senator Sosnowski, call the Governor's Office and say that you support the, uh, the, the commissioners, Rhode Island commissioners, voting for, in favor of, voting in favor of Adoption E of Amendment 3. And that will get the message across. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for uh, being here. Yeah. Thank you for watching our very first Tide Talks. Uh, if you'd like to listen to more, you can find Save the Bays podcast on iTunes or SoundCloud.